Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving GRE math questions out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the revised general test. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is the one that you will find on page number 244. And today is our lesson number 147. Day 147. Problem that we are about to solve is, is, is number 11. We are told here <coughs> Kathleen's weekly salary was increased by 8% to $237.60. It is important that you have the book in front of you, turn to page 244 and do the problem with me. So her salary we are told is went up by 8%. Her salary went up by 8% to 237.60. Question simply is what was our original salary? That's all. Let's do it then. Here's the solution. So here this amount this amount of 237.60 this amount <coughs> here the 237.60 what does it represent? what does this amount represent? what does this amount represent if we are told that that is, his, that is her salary after she got an 8% raise. Well it must represent 108% of her original salary. That's what this represents. This represents 108% represents 108% of her original salary. Let's call that S. I'm going to use letter S to represent her original salary. Oh, oh better yet, let's not use this. Forget about that. Huh? We're going to set it up a little bit differently. So that's it. So now the question is, so now, so now the question is, 108% of what is 108% of what is 237.60 That's the question 108% of what is 260 We have to just simply set up the equation solve for the unknown and that's it that, that unknown is our salary Let's do it on the top, I need a lot of room If you have not uh, watched these videos before and if you are shaky on the percentage problem on the concept of percentage problem the biggest hurdle that I've seen people have in the percentage problem is making sure that you come up with the right equations especially if it's a fairly complicated percentage problem if your equation that you come up with is not correct then it doesn't matter what you do with it it does not matter how good you are at solving the equation if the equation itself is no good then of course the answer is going to be wrong watch these videos if you need more practice just type in Revised GRE Math, day 84 through 93. There are 10 days that I spend on it, uh, on, the, on the topic, on the percentage problems. Watch those videos, day 84 through 93, and get some practice. Now, for those of you who have watched those videos, you, of course, know what to do with this sentence. What we do is we translate this sentence word by word. Every single word we translate it, and for every single word in this sentence, we have a mathematical symbol. So that's what we're going to do. I need the room, so I'm going to do it on the top. So here we go, 108 
108 percent means what does percent mean? percent means over 100 that's exactly what the percent means the word percent means exactly what it says the word percent literally means per 100 that's where the word century comes from per 100 which means out of 100 percent means percent means out of 100 so 17 percent would be 17 out of 100 4 percent would be 4 out of 100 28 percent means 28 out of 100 3 and a quarter percent means 3 and a quarter out of 100 that's what percent means percent means out of 100 so 108 percent means out of 100 off means off means times times or multiply so multiply what what is our unknown and we typically convention dictates that we replace it with x of course if you were to replace it with y if you want to call your unknown x instead of x if you want to call it y or z or a or b it doesn't really matter as a matter of fact just to make it interesting I'm going to replace it with s s is our salary so 108% of what which I'm calling it s for the salary that's what we are solving for what does how do we how what does is mean is means e is means equals is means equals so I'm showing you here how to translate every single word we do not skip even even one word 108 percent means out of 100 off means times what which is our unknown I keep switching back and forth let's stick with it let's, let's stick with the tradition which is our unknown the x and then is means equals and then of course 237 that's it we have our equation we have our equation and we know for a fact that that equation is correct now it's just a matter of taking our time and making sure that we don't end up making some careless mistake but as far as the equation is concerned we are safe we are 100 percent sure that that equation is correct it has to be correct because we translated it we translated it word for word we did not skip any single word how can you go wrong just translate it word for word no matter no matter how convoluted the sentence is pay no attention to exactly how the sentence is composed take one word at a time and translate it and you will see that the correct equation will automatically emerge you won't have to think about it it will emerge automatically magically so here we go we have to get rid of 100 from the we have to get rid of the 100 from the bottom here so let's multiply both sides by 100 multiply both sides by 100 we can get rid of this 100 from the bottom we have to get rid of this 108 from the top let's multiply both sides let's divide both sides by 108 now we can get rid of now we can get rid of this this 108 so what we are left here is x which is what we wanted we wanted the x by itself and x equals this quantity which we are going to figure out in one second I need the room so I'm going to erase all of this thing because I need the room well luckily for us luckily for us I was thinking about how to get rid of this decimal thing because I hate dealing with decimals but 0 .60, 0 0.60 times 100 if we were to multiply this quantity by 100 we can get rid of this decimal because the decimal is going to move two places if you multiply it by 100 the decimal is going to move two places to the right and it will become 237.60 on the top and the bottom is 108 let's see what can we do well they are both even numbers they are both even numbers <coughs> let's, can we do it with 4 or should we try with 2 first let's try with 2 so 10 becomes 5 and this becomes 4 23 Oh, sorry, not 23. That's not what I meant to say. How many twos in a two? Two has only one two. How many twos in a three? Three has one two. The remaining one is going to go and become join this guy, and it's going to become 17. How many twos in a 17? 17 has 
eight, eight twos because eight twos are 16. The remaining one is going to go and join this guy, it becomes eight again. And how many twos in a zero? It's just zero. Oh, we can go one more time actually. We could have gone with four. Let's go one more time. How many twos in a five? There are two, two twos in a five. The remaining one goes and joins the four, becomes 14. How many twos in a 14? There are seven of them. And let's do the top. How many twos in a one? There is zero one, uh, zero, zero, how many, how many twos in a one? One has only, one has zero twos, it's too small. That one goes and joins this guy, becomes 11. How many twos in 11? There are five twos in 11. The remaining one goes and joins this guy, becomes 18. How many twos in 18? There are nine twos in 18. How many twos in an eight? Eight has four twos. How many twos in a zero? It has, zero has no, no twos. That's it, we can't go two any more time because this is this is an odd number, that's an even number. So let's try three. Huh? We know 27 is divisible by three. How do we figure out if a number is divisible by three? A number, a number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. What's the sum of the digit here? Well, 9 is just 9, 9 is divisible by 3, and then we got a 5 and a 4, 5 plus 4 is 9, which is also divisible by 3. So we can divide this number by 3, we can divide this number by 3, let's do it, shall we? Let's divide, 27 divided by 3 is 9, how many 3's in a 5? Five? 5 has only one 3. The remaining 2 is going to go and join this guy. It becomes 29. How many 3's in a 29? 29 has 9 3's. 9 3's are 27. The remaining 2 is going to go and join this guy. It's going to 24. How many 3's in a 24? 24 has 8 3's. Oh, we can go 3 one more time. Oh, better yet, we don't have to go 3. I just realized we can go by 9 actually. We can go by 9. Oh, and how many 3's in a 0? Zero? 0 has zero, zero has no 3's. Don't forget the 0 at the end here. So now we got 1980 divided by 9. 1980 divided by 9. That actually is divisible by 9. I just noticed it because this, this, is, this is 18. The remaining one is going to go and join this guy. And it's going to become another 18. So if you were to divide 9 by the top. How many, how many nines in a zero? How many nines in a one? One has only no, no nines. Nineteen has two nines. The remaining one is going to go, jo go here and join this guy, becomes eighteen, which has two. So we, we end up with how many nines in a one? One has zero nines. One goes and joins this nine, becomes nineteen. How many nines in a nineteen? Nineteen has two nines. The remaining one goes and joins this guy becomes 18. How many nines are in 18? 18 has two nines. How many nines in the zero? Zero has no nines. That's it. That's your answer, 220. That's your answer, 220. That's all it is. Now I'm making the wonder if we really had to take such a roundabout way because I did it in a very baby step. I did it in a baby step because I don't want to freak you out. You have to be able to see if, if a number goes into some larger number, you can start with that. I started with twos and I kept with twos, twos and twos until, and then we finally did threes and threes, which takes a lot of time. If you can figure out that the number can be divided by a larger number, you should go ahead and do it. You should go ahead and do it. So I'm going to redo this thing. I'm going to redo this thing just for the fun of it. I need the room. Where can I do it? Let's do it here. I find it annoying, I find it annoying having to do this thing two at a time. Here's what you do. As long as the last two digits of the number, listen very carefully, as long as the last two digits of the number is divisible by four, the number itself is divisible by four. Why? Because look, 116. A hundred does not matter. This one, this 116 is 100 plus 16. Of course, any multiples of 100 is divisible by 4. 100 is divisible by 4, therefore had it been 300, 300 would have been divisible by 4. 1000 is divisible by 4. Had it been 5316, 1000 is divisible by 4, therefore 5000 is divisible by 4. So we don't have to worry about 100 digit or 1000 digit or 10,000 digit. 
we only have to worry about the last two digits. As long as the last two digits are divisible by 4, the number itself is divisible by 4. And we notice here the last two digits are 60. 60 of course is divisible by 4. And 8 is divisible by 4. 0 and 8, that's 8. So that number is divisible by 4. Let's do it. Let's divide by 4. I'm going to divide by 4. 10 has two 4's, the remaining 2 goes and joins this guy, it becomes 28. 28 divide, divided by 4 is 7. On the top we have 23. 23, how many 4's how many in a 23? 23 has 5 4's, 5 4's are 20. The remaining 3 goes and joins this guy, it becomes 37. You do have to concentrate. You have to, which is the biggest hurdle I find over and over again when I'm dealing with my clients. You must concentrate. Your mind cannot wander. This requires concentration so that you do not lose track of what you are saying to yourself. Which is why I speak out loud so you can, you can hear my thinking. One more time. One more time from the very beginning if you like. From the very beginning. We are dividing, we're dividing by 4. We are dividing by 4. How many 4's in a 2? 2 has no 4's. The 2 goes and joins this guy becomes 23. How many 4's in a 23? 23 has 5 4's. 5 4's are 20. The remaining 3 goes and joins this guy becomes 37. How many 4's in a 37? 37 has 9 4's. 9 4's are 36. The remaining one is going to go join this guy becomes 16. How many 4's in a 16? 16 has 4 4's. And how many 4's in a 0? 0 has no 4. Now, I see this is a multiple of 9. Can, this, can we divide this? Multiple? Let's divide by 3. If we divide by 3, 27 has 9 threes. How many threes in a 5? 5 has 1 3. The remaining 2 goes and joins this guy becomes 29. How many threes in a 29? 29 has 9 threes. 9 threes are 27. The remaining 2 goes and joins this guy becomes 24. How many threes in a 24? 24 has 8 threes. How many threes in a 0? 0 has no 3. Now we do them by 9 that we did before, 1980 divided by 9, and you find that the answer is 220. That's it, that's our answer, 220. Now listen, if you're going to tell me that why the hell should I bother with all of this nonsense that you're going through when I have the calculator right in front of me on the screen, and if that's what you want to do, if that's the route you want to take, then by all means be my guest. My preference is not to use the bloody thing. Because typically, calculator does not scream at me, hey, you idiot, you made a mistake. It does not scream at me. So if I make a mistake, if I punch in the wrong key, the calculator is not going to tell me that. If you use your own brain, you are less likely to make careless mistake. You are less likely to punch in something wrong. That's the way I feel. Anyway, that's your call. Anyway, the answer is 220. What I want to do at the very end now, before we actually close this video, is so I want to verify this. I want to verify, make sure the 220 is the right answer. How do we verify it? Here's how we verify it. 220, 220 was our original salary. Okay, this is carefully. I need the room, so I'm going to erase this part here. And we know that 237, 237.60 is 108% of the salary. That's what we're claiming. Uh, that, that, that's not what we're claiming, that's what we're told. We're told that 108% of the salary is 237.60. And what we are claiming is that the original salary is 220. I want to make sure that if we were to add 8% to it, we get this amount. That's what we're getting at. Do you understand? Now, I do not know what 8% of this amount is, so I'm going to have to do it in bits and pieces. This is how we do it. Let's add 10%. 10% of 220 is 22. That's very easy. So this amount represents 110%. We need 108%, so let's subtract, let's subtract 1%. Let's subtract 1%, 1% of what? Or rather, let's subtract 2%. 2% of what? 2% of 220, because we have, the, we added 8%, if we added 8% and if we subtract 2%, we'll end up with 108%. What is 1% of 220? You should know this thing, this is very simple. Just move the decimal places, it's 220. The 1% is going to be, you just move the two decimal places, you 2.2, that's 1%. If 1% is 2.2, 2% is going to be 4.4. Let's subtract it. 0.6, that's a good sign because we do need a 6 there. 6, 11 minus 4 is 7, that's another good sign, we get a 7 here. 
this becomes 3, ah, voila. And that amount represents 108%. 108% of 220, that is, 108% of 220. That's all. It does work. That's, that's the right answer. That's the correct answer. I will see you tomorrow. And the reason I take this much time, as I explained to you before many times, for those of you who have been watching my videos before, the purpose of these videos is not for simply for me to stand there and solve the problem. If that's what you wanted, solve the problem. There are many videos, there are many other people on the YouTube. That's exactly what they do. They solve problems after problems after problems. That's not what I want to do here. I want you to learn mathematics. I want you to acquire the skill. There's a difference between solving a problem for the sake of solving it and sinking your teeth into it and learning all the concepts until you get the gut feeling of it. This is, this is what it is. You must verify at the end. Make sure it comes up the right answer. And how do you verify? How do you figure out that 108% of 220 is whatever they're claiming that, they, that it is? Well, very simple. I don't know what 108% is. I can very easily figure out 110%. 10% of any number is very easy. You just drop the last digit. Once I have 110%, finding out 1% is very easy. Drop the last two digits. So 2% is just two times the amount. Subtract the 2% from the 10% and you're left with 8%. That's what it is. Do you understand? But those are not the kind of things that the calculator is going to teach you. That you have to do your own thinking. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? I'm done with my sermon. I'm in.